We left you with a little problem last time. We introduced a vertical interface uh, separating two medium, a medium with resistivity of 25 ohmmeters and one with a resistivity of 75 ohmmeters. And we have the, um, we're measuring the potential difference uh, at a point centered on the boundary between the two medium. And we've got a current here that's uh, 0.6 amperes. And uh, so this setup is a Schlumberger array with an L of 9 and a B of 2 meters. <clears throat> and these are the basic equations that uh, we've been using. So we know that uh, at M, the potential uh, relative to uh, A will be consist of a direct path, this rho 1 over 2 pi d1, which d1 would be 7 meters, or 9 minus 2. Plus, um, we also have a reflected component. We go from A over to the boundary and then back. So we have this uh, reflected uh, component over that path, which is going to be 11. And then when we do, when we measure it at uh, N, uh, well, we have a direct path uh, directly over to N. So we have 1 minus K. We're coming through the medium row 2 to this potential electrode. And our D3 in this case uh, would, be equal to, would be equal to 11. <clears throat> so at M, again, we have uh, the direct and uh, reflected current paths from, uh, from A. And we also have a transmitted current path coming over from B. So likewise for N, we have those three terms. So note that when we're coming from B over to M, that the reflection coefficient is going to change because um, uh, we have the, the, basically the resistivity and um, this becomes the resistivity in medium 2. So we have 25 ohmmeters minus 75 ohmmeters over 100 meters which gives us a reflection coefficient of minus 0.5. So um, <clears throat> sign of the reflection coefficient changes and uh, so if we're plugging in for the potential at M relative to A Again, we have these two terms uh, consisting of the direct, this term here, and the reflected going over to the interface and then back to M with uh, 11. And then we have the reflection coefficient, which would be uh, 0.5 in this case. <coughs> From B to M, we've got the familiar looking expression, except remember that uh, K changes sign, and we have 1 minus K, so this becomes 1.5. And um, so you, you have to subtract the potential from the sink or the negative electrode, and the sign of the reflection coefficient changes with respect to the sink in order to get the potential difference, which would be the difference between these two terms. So we have... Now the potential at M relative to A, just plugging in, we get 0.45 volts. Uh, the potential at M relative to the sink electrode, uh, just plugging in the formula. Remember, we had to switch the sign of the reflection coefficient here. This 0 0.0986 is uh, 0.6 amperes over 2 pi. And we get 0.326 volts. So, uh, just looking at the potential at M, then, relative to A and B, we get the difference of these two terms, which gives us 0.124 volts. And then going on and doing the same thing for electrode N, <clears throat> we've got the transmitted uh, path from A to N, so we're using this relationship here. Uh, K, or the reflection coefficient, is positive, so this becomes a 0.5, and the distance is 9 plus 2, or 11. So we get 0.326 volts. And then when we come from B to N, we have both the direct current 
flow and the reflected current flow. So we have these two terms in here, rho 2 over 2 pi times 7, the length of the uh, direct current path, and k, which is negative, uh, times uh, uh, the uh, resistivity in this medium over 2, phi, 2 pi times 11, which is over to the interface, 9 meters, and then back 2 meters, giving you 11 meters. And this gives us, we see that the uh, <clears throat> potential at end relative to A and B is negative 0 0.374 volts. So uh, we've got 0.125 volts here at this electrode, uh, 0.375 minus 0.375 volts uh, here at this electrode. And we take the difference between those two, and um, we get 0.5 volts. I think the notation here should be approved, but basically the uh, potential at this point between A and B is going to be 0.5 volts here. So as an exercise, show that the potential difference is 0.28 volts, 25 ohmmeters over here, row 2 is 75 ohmmeters here, but we move the interface over to N. If you go through the math, you should find that the potential difference, or yeah, the potential difference that you measure should be 0.28 volts, and that's because we're, the two electrodes are located uh, in the medium with a lower resistivity. However, if we move the boundary here, or move our array over to the right, a distance 4 meters. Then the boundary is located at uh, electrode M, and you'll find that the potential is 0.65 volts. So we go from, uh, depending on where our boundary is located, if the potential difference is being measured in this medium, we get uh, 0.28 volts in this medium, uh, 0.65 volts when we're measuring right across, if the, if the uh, boundary is right in the middle, we get 0.5, so you can see that we're dropping, or we, we, we're increasing as we go from M to N. And that kind of makes sense because the resistivity is increasing and, um, uh, across the boundary. And, you know, it depends on the resistivity of the uh, interval in which the potential difference is being measured. So, um, so another question is, okay, we've shown that, that we, you know, if our interfa interface is located here, we get 0.68. If it's located here, we get the 0.5 volts. If it's located here, we get 0.28 volts. But what would the voltage be if it were measured at large distances to the, uh, to the left and right of the boundary? So how would you determine that? Well, that should be pretty simple. We're just kind of back to we've got a medium with a constant resistivity. We'd use the um, uh, geometrical factor for the Schlumberger array just to simplify our computations. And uh, remember the geometrical factor for the Schlumberger array is uh, just uh, pi times L squared minus B squared over 2B. Uh, L was our 9 meters here. Our B was 2 meters. If you do that, you'll find that the potential difference measured to at a, at a significant distance to the left should uh, become about, should drop from 0.28 to 0.25 and should increase from 0.68 to 0.74 at a great distance over here to the, uh, to the right and medium two. So we're going to come back to, so you can see that funny things happen when you cross the boundary, depending on where your potential electrodes are located. We'll come back to this uh, when we talk about the tripotential resistivity method. Tripotential resistivity method is basically a setup uh, <clears throat> where the spacing between electrodes is kept constant. And this would be our typical Wenner array here. So we're measuring the potential difference across the center, two electrodes. And we have our battery, our source electrode, our sink electrode uh, uh, set up in the usual configuration. And uh, all we're doing with uh, the resistivity meter is switching the which electrodes we measure the potential difference from. 
I measure the potential difference from these two electrodes and have current flowing between these two electrodes, I get a, another measurement. If I have potential, if I have current flowing through these two electrodes, entering the ground, flowing through here, I measure the potential over here, I get a, another measurement. And uh, so we'll talk a little bit more about that next time. Uh, thanks for joining us. See you next time.